What's good, everybody? Time for a DL short. I was sitting around watching YouTube like I normally do, and I came across um, the soft white underbelly. I was watching that, and there was an episode. Uh, the title of the episode is A Divorce Attorney's Thoughts on Love and Marriage, James Sexton. So, um, man, this brother has some very profound thoughts, one in particular, and I decided, you know what, let me do a quick short, and let's talk about this. Um, you know, everyone knows marriage in America is, you know, not a good deal when you when you're kind of looking at stuff. So let's let's check this out and hear what he has to say about all this. Um, and here we go. If you break it down fundamentally, fifty six percent of marriages end in divorce. Like think about that's the ones that end in divorce. So. How many people, what percentage stay together for the kids? Or because they don't want to give away half their shit. Another 10%? That's conservative. Conservative. But let's say, let's say 20%. Then, yeah, okay. That's, that's at least right. You now have a technology that fails 76% of the time. That's think about that right there. Think about that. Like, you know, his numbers are, are skewing a little high, but I think he's I think he's in California. California's divorce rate, I think, is higher on average than the rest of the country or wherever he is. But, you know, we all accept that 50 percent of the time marriages end in divorce. We talk about that here on this platform all the time. So I get where he's saying. Here you have a product that fails over 70 percent of the time. Yet people still buy the product. I mean, they go crazy in debt to get the product. And then when the product goes bad. They lose a lot of money, time and energy and effort. It messes them up financially. It messes them up spiritually. It messes them up mentally. And yet this product is still available and pushed on the public. It's crazy. Let's continue. It's insane. That's insane. That's more likely than not. 76. If I told you there's a 76 percent chance when you walk out the door today, you're going to get hit in the head with a bowling ball. You would not go out or you'd wear a helmet for sure. But he ain't lying about that. And we talk about it. Um, You know, you guys know I used to jump out of airplanes in the army. If you tell me there's a 76 percent or 70 plus percent chance that my parachute is not going to properly deploy. Most people aren't going to jump. I'm, I'm going to want to pack my own parachute. Like, well, if, it's, if the chances of failure are that high, at least I want to be able to pack my own shoe. That would be my only stipulation. Let me pack my own pair of shoes and I'll jump. But if I can't pack my shoe, no, I'm not going to do it. If you told me there was 70% chance that if I got in my car and drove to the corner store that I would be involved in a serious automobile accident. I mean, 70, per six, you know, 70 plus percent of the time, if I get in my car, I'm going to get hurt. I'm walking. Why you dig? I'm walking. <laughs> Let's continue. People just continue to get married. Not only do they continue to get married, there's a presumption that you should get married. And if you don't get married, there's something wrong with you. So if you've got a girlfriend and you've been with her for five years and you say to someone, we're getting married, they go, oh, that's great. You know, they don't go, why? You're happy. Why would you get married? He has a point. He has a point. If we're out and about one-on-one and we're associates or whatever, we're cool. And you tell me you get married. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say why, if I don't really know you like that, I'm not going to rain on your parade. I'll be like, oh, congratulations, right? Because that's what you're supposed to say. But it doesn't make any sense, right? It's just like, hey, man, if, if I care about you and we wake up one day and we're out and about kicking it and we bump into each other, we have lunch, you're like, hey, man, um, I've made that, I'm going to make that leap. I mean, I've made, it, I made up my mind. I'm jumping into a volcano. Hey, bro, Why? Right? Why? That doesn't make any sense. You're definitely going to get hurt. People understand that at least there's at least a 50 percent chance that this is not going to go well for you. That your endeavor is going to end poorly. Why do it? But we encourage people to do it. That's fascinating. Let's continue. Great. Like everything's going fine. Why would you put yourself through that? Why would you run that risk? If you say to someone, we've been together five years and we've decided we're not going to get married. We're going to move in together, but we're not going to get married. Ooh, what's wrong? Again, intimacy issues? What's your problem? And that part right there, like we're going to move in together, but not get married. I used to advocate cohabitation and stuff like that. Like, yeah, man, go ahead and move into together. But I don't anymore. You got to be real, real careful. 
if you're going to move in with someone, you got to be very, very careful. The way people are utilizing the laws and the way some people are going out here doing what they're doing, getting law enforcement involved and stuff like that, filing suit, keeping, you know I me mean, filming everything you do. You got to be careful. But I would cohabitate before I would marry someone because there's, you know, and I would also be very aware of the common law uh, statutes in my state because living with somebody could be the same as getting married in some states. So you got to look into that. But again, we all know that anyone who's out there saying we're about to get married, we know it's a huge expense. And we know that, again, at least half the time it doesn't work. More than that in some states. Meanwhile, 56% end in divorce. It's, it's literally fits the legal definition of negligence. It's a negligent behavior. The way you define negligence in law school is when what you lose by not doing something, okay, is lower than the risk of harm. It's what's called a BPL analysis. So the burden of not doing a thing is lower than the likelihood, the probability of harm. So BPL, so burden, probability, and loss. Marriage is an inherently negligent activity. It's like, is that true? <laughs> like, yo, law people, if you out there, hit me up in the comments. Is what he just said true? Is that a thing? And if it is a thing, how long before people begin to sue the states for negligence, <laughs> right? Because they're selling a product that doesn't work. Think about that for a moment. If I was, if my, if I had the largest marriage corporation on the planet, right? Let's say in America, I got the largest marriage corporate. 90% of marriages go through my corporation. I'm selling the product. And 70% of the time, the product fails. And it fails to an extent that it costs, you know, harm, financial and other harm to not just the people who buy the product, but to the government, because the government has to get involved and help, you know, it's, it's costs associated with the failure of my product. How long before the government puts me out of business? How long before I'm on CNN, right? How long before right, they come in there and I'm sued into oblivion? Think about that for a moment. What is the point? We know marriage the way it is today, the way the, the current laws are right now on the books does not work. And yet we're not doing anything to protect those people who buy that product. Think about that. Is he right? Wow. Let's continue. Owning a lion. Like it, 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 you're, the likelihood of someone getting hurt seriously you know, by this is you. very, very high. No one That's hilarious. Dude said the likelihood is like getting married and like the negligence, the level of negligence is like owning a lion. <laughs> Think about that, bro. If you own a lion, you know you're going to have a problem. Owning a lion, owning a bear, like you know you're going to have a problem at some point. That's not a good buy. That's crazy. That, that, that's so funny. <laughs> Whenever says it to you, because why? Because, and, and I'm, I would say something, I've been doing this for over 20 years, and I, I still get misty-eyed at weddings. Like I still really, there's something in me that goes like, you know, maybe it'll work out for these two. You still believe like, it's in love. sweet. I absolutely believe in love. I think love is wonderful. The, but love and marriage have very little to do with each other. I don't think there's much of a correlation there. I, I, and I think that's where we got off track. Like I Facts. Love has absolutely nothing to do with marriage. You can love whoever, whatever you want. That's fine. It's all good. You get married. You just bought a product. You just signed a contract that's going to wreck somebody. Possibly. And... You bought a product and you bought a service, a good, whatever you want to call it. You've, in, you've entered into a contract that does not protect both parties. The party that has less money is the party that's going to get over because you can just walk away at any time. So if you get, into a, you get into a contract and one person is incentivized to leave that contract and they walk away, they're walking away with stuff. They're walking away with properties. They're walking away with money. They're walking away with uh, retirement packages, whether they're working or not. Think about that. 
one person in that marriage, one person in that contract is going to get over. It. And we accept that craziness man, craziness. I believe in pair bonds. I believe I don't think I can learn everything I need to know about myself from myself. I, I think having someone around me who sees my blind spots and that, that doesn't have to be a romantic partner. That could be a friend. That could be any number of things. But there is something wonderful about romantic connection. We know that. I mean, the other statistic is 56% of marriages end in divorce, but 84% of people who get divorced are remarried within five years of their divorce. Really? Insane stat. I looked it up. It's, he's close. A lot of people get remarried. And no, if those people were thinking like, well, then they make, they realized where they made the mistakes, they made the adjustments, so the second marriage is going to be more successful. No. Second marriages fail at a higher rate than the first marriage. Crazy, huh? Crazy. And again, don't take my word for it. Go out there and pull your own stats. Think about that. So now you've <laughs> now you've done it and failed and felt the pain of the loss. And within five years, 84% are remarried. So when, when you fall in love. The way we do marriage in this country has changed. Um, you can see that the marriage rates are down. They've they, they dropped through the floor. Uh, same thing with the birth rates. Our birth rates are down. You know, um, there's definitely a fundamental flaw with the way we look at marriage and the way we handle marriage in America. It's not a very difficult problem to fix. It can be easily fixed. Uh, you look at states like Florida where they have, you know, done away with forever alimony. That's one way of dealing with some issues. Uh, there are other states out there who are, you know, looking at removing the no fault divorce. Right now, you're going to have to prove why you want to get divorced. There's, you know, it's there's a slow change coming. Why? Because people don't want to get married. And I say this all the time on this platform. If you are a brokey, you have nothing going on. You're living with your mom in the basement or whatever. And someone comes and asks you to marry them. And that person has means and that person has done well with them. Life, yeah, go, I'll, go ahead and get married. Go ahead and get married. You know, my thing is, if you if you say the words and you get married, stay married, try to stay married. But most people, they get into it. Something happens that they don't like and boom, they're out of there within seven to 10 years or whatever. And once that happens, they get rewarded for that choice, be it female or be it male. Now, granted. Up until this point. The money has the, the wealth has transferred from male to female. Why? Because men were making more money. They were out there working these days. Women are getting their own money. So you start to see cases where money is flowing from females to males. You, know, you have women who will divorce their guy because he's a deadbeat or whatever, no fault divorce. And then they'll get into the family uh, law process. They get into family court and she's paying half of her pension. She's giving up a home or two, right? She has to pay spousal support. It's starting to change, guys. It's starting to change. But I just saw that, you know, that, that, that one point he made about marriage being negligent. Bro, is that a thing? Can we sue the state for selling us a product that is doesn't work? <laughs> it's negligence. Is it negligence on the part of the states and the federal government to back this product, this technology that is fundamentally flawed? Hmm. I wonder. Right? Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think, man. I'm DL Sam. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.